Yo, what's going on guys? This is the 4th Gen Gamer here and welcome to a brand new series that we are launching, Jubilife TV. This is a talk show podcasty type of thing that we are launching and this is going to be a series that is going to be dedicated to news and the community and interviews and all this other stuff and well, that's pretty much the three different segments that we're doing. And if you guys have any suggestions for more stuff that we can cover on this show, if you have any ideas for different segments, please feel free to let me know down in the comment section below, but that leads us pretty nicely into the introduction of this series, and well, what is it going to be made up of? So, first we're going to start off with the news from the past week. This is being recorded on Friday, so it's going to include the news from the week, so if something happened on Saturday, today, you know, you won't see it until next week, so it's this past week's news that just happened. We have then a community spotlight where I go over a Poketuber, a content creator that I think is really underrated or deserves some exposure, and we'll go through their channel briefly and just show some of their videos and just show what they're all about and why I think that they deserve some exposure on the community spotlight. And then last but not least, an interview with a fellow Poketuber, content creator, streamer, whatever it may be, and today that is going to be Just Play Pokemon. So, I hope you guys are excited for episode one of this series, and if you have any suggestions, like I said, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and with that being said, let's get it going. Alright, so let's get on to some news. This week was kind of dead with news. We do have a few topics to cover though, a few events. We'll start off with VGC. We saw some rule changes, nothing crazy at all, but I will flash them on the screen for you guys if this does pertain to you and you like to battle and stuff with VGC. Pokemon Shuffle! Do you like Pokemon Shuffle? That's awesome, because guess what? There is a Mega Stone Challenge! Yeah, Pokemon Shuffle is going to be having an event that's been going on for a few days now, but if you would like to participate in this, all you have to do is go on your game and there will be a competitive stage available, you can play on it, and if you get one of the top scores, let me get the numbers here, if you score in the top 50,000 in Japan, the top 18,000 in the US, or top 12,000 in Europe, you can get yourself a nice Swamperdite, and that will be going until January 12th. If you want to find out any more information about this event or anything else that I talk about today, links, as always, are going to be down below to all these sources with the news and more information about all the stories. And in addition to Pokemon Shuffle, Pokemon Shuffle Mobile also has a Mega Stone Challenge. That will be the same idea except with a Banetite, so you can get yourself a nice, you know, Mega, mega Banet, yay! And, you know, if you score top 100,000, that is going to be globally this time, then you will get yourself this awesome Mega Stone, and you'll be able to get to try this out once a day, and that will end on January 12th as well. Okay, I know, it, it's, it's a spin-off game, some people like it, it's not my cup of tea, but I'm trying to get all hyped about it, it's hard, it's... It's Shuffle! I want Z! Give me Z! <sighs> <coughs> hey, we have a new Pokémon Tournament character coming, that's great, right? Yeah, so we're going to have a new announcement coming next week about Pokémon next Friday, that is going to be the 15th, if you're interested in that. <laughs> Pokémon Z! <laughs> um, that's gonna be coming, and um, it is going to involve a new character, and we don't have any clues, except it's going to involve this... this... Japanese character. L literally, that's all that we know about it. It's gonna involve that character, and that's all that we know. So, uh, yeah, if you like Pokken, that's cool. That's awesome. Sorry, I'm just- that, that's me. If you're gonna watch Dube Life TV, that- that's me. Yeah. Hi. Alright, and last but not least, we do have a new tournament that is going to be happening at the end of this month. It is our first international challenge. That is the Wi-Fi tournament that is going to be happening at the end of this month. If you'd like to participate, you can register by between January 21st and January 28th, and that will uh, run on January 29th into the 31st. The rankings for that will be announced in February. If you'd like to find out more information, like I said, with anything that we talked about today with news, check the description down below. And with that being said, let's get into our community spotlight. All right, guys, let's go on to the community spotlight portion of this video. And as I mentioned before, this is going to be once every week on this series, and we are going to be picking a content creator or Poketuber stream or whatever it may be that I think just puts in a lot of work, has some really great content, and, you know, really deserves this. You know, someone that I don't mind putting on here and just showing you guys, hey, this person's awesome, go check them out, you know, seriously. So if you guys have any suggestions for your Poketubers that you really think just put in a lot of work and really could 
you know, just deserve this. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, it's all about community and just helping other people out. Then, like I said, leave their channel down below. And with that being said, let's dive into this. So, for this first one, week one, episode one, whatever the fuck you want to call it, we have Professor Willow. This guy is awesome. He has definitely a bit of a personality in his videos and has really just cool ways of playing through the game. He only has two series so far, but he posts very consistently daily videos, and he does go through with his series from the first two that we see. He's been going strong with his second one, and his first series that he ended up doing was a heart gold. I want to say it's sacred gold. I don't want to, I don't want to blank now. I forget. It's been a little bit since I watched it, but it was a really fun series. He went through the game and pretty much only used Pokemon that were 360 base stat or lower. And he got that motivation, I believe, from, like, um, using a spin to somehow, or... I forget the exact details, it's... It was a while ago that he posted it, but... Really just some cool series that he does from the very beginning, and he's only at 100 subscribers, so go send him some love from the Pipla people, and post on his latest video, hashtag Pipla people, and only do that on one video. Don't do that everywhere, because we want to show people that, hey, we're about community, the Pipla people, we're strong people, and you know what? We're about community, and we're about spreading the love, and this guy is awesome. He posts a lot of great content. He posts daily, like I said. His videos are quality, and he's always improving. Like, he's only been around for a few months posting videos, but you can see. He cares. He has a capture card, and he puts out some awesome stuff. Right now, he's going through Unova. He's going through, like, with some... He's making, like, a Rocket storyline, pretty much go with it. He's going, and he's stealing Pokemon. And I mean, he has no rules to be a general dick. Because he's part of Team Rocket. Now, that is awesome. Go check out Professor Willow, guys. His link is down below. This has been your community spotlight. On to the interview, everybody. All right, guys. Welcome to the interview portion of today's episode. So, today I'm going to be interviewing, as you can see, just play Pokemon. Say hello to everybody, the awesome people, people watching. Hello to everybody, the awesome Pip Up people watching. Yes, I am just playing Pokemon. It's good to be here, man. Jubilee Life TV is going to be hot. Ha, you know it. So let's just jump right into the questions. I think a good question to start with is about, well, when did you start playing Pokemon and on what game? Oh, man, I wish I had gone I in my closet like three feet to my left. I have an old brick Game Boy. You know what I'm talking about. The gigantic oh, yeah. one. The fat stacks Game Boy. And I started playing Pokemon Blue pretty much uh, when it came out. Like, it was just one of those things where all my all my friends at school were playing it. Everybody was playing it on the bus. You actually had to use link cables to connect to Pokemon. And there used to be a cloning glitch where you disconnected your cables at the right time and it erased people's games. It was good times, man. So I picked Bulbasaur and I I'm played sure Blue. Did. And I got to the Hall of Fame with a like level 90 Venusaur and I uh, fell in love with the game. I've played since first gen, but I'm not a gen one -er. I love everything. That is dope. You know, when I think of that with the link cable, I think of that old commercial. I don't know if you remember that when like they're throwing like the link cable across the building and all the Pokemon were walking across like a <laughs> tightrope, you know? Yeah, yeah. That absolutely. shit was awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's fast forward a little bit. When you really started YouTube with your Pokemon channel, you really started off uh, with Pokemon X and Y a little bit before them, but you know, with the birth of X and Y, we saw a lot of stuff change with the Pokemon community. I feel like a lot more stuff was going on, and overall, in your opinion, how has X and Y transformed the Pokemon community? I think it definitely gave it a surge in popularity, and it definitely made it more. I don't want to say mainstream because Pokemon's always been widely played, but I think because it looks so much better to the outsider that's never played it, I think it garnered some interest. Like I remember I I was playing it, you know, and just playing the heck out of it. And I've never fallen in love with a Pokemon game like that for years, probably since we just talked about with Blue. You know, where I was just like, I gotta play Pokemon, I gotta play Pokemon, I gotta play Pokemon, right? And Let's play Pokemon, the, hey. the thing for me was that I loved it. It was an awesome game. I didn't care as much about the graphics, although that was great. But to the outsider, I had a co-worker that had never played Pokemon before, but played WoW, played all these other games. It, was, it wasn't it was snooty about Pokemon, but it was just like, man, you know, I don't really see the point. And I was like, dude, come here. Had Pokemon <laughs> X up. I was like, look at this. Just showed him the 3DS. He was like, oh, that looks really cool. And you know, like, when you think of Gen 1 to Gen 6, that's a huge difference. And if they have Gen really 1 in their mind, 
it's it's incredible, right? And he was blown away. He went out and he ended up spending way too much money on lots of different Pokemon stuff. Played the heck out of both games <laughs> and finished them. So that's kind of like the idea, right? That's great. that's what it did for everybody to me. I think it, it totally expanded the community. And I know for me, like you said, uh, it it really helped kickstart my channel. That's what I wanted it to do. That's what I dreamed it would do. And I'm glad that it it worked out because I love the game and everybody else watching loved the game. And I hope we get that again soon. Yeah, definitely. It really was a breath of fresh air. I mean, like, brought in some old fans that maybe, you know, kind of fell off the Pokemon thing and brought in some new people and the old people that were still there with 5th Gen uh, enjoyed it as well. So that was great. Um, moving on, we do have another little changing uh, force here with uh, content creation uh, in addition to X and Y. This past year, we've seen a lot of stuff happen on Twitch. 2015, really, I feel like with the Pokemon community, it was the year of Twitch, and 2014 was all about X and Y, and Twitch really transformed a lot of other stuff, so uh, in your opinion, how has Twitch.tv impacted your role as a content creator? I, I really have Elliot, Galactic Elliot, you can check him out, of course, fellow Fab Five member, to thank for kind of putting me on to like, hey dude, Twitch is really popping. You should check it out. I think you would do well over there. And it was weird because Elliot was kind of down on YouTube when I started with X and Y. And then I kind of got him back into really like his head was inside YouTube and we did some great stuff. It was the other way around for Twitch. I did a few streams here and there and it wasn't that I wasn't into it so much as I was so focused on YouTube. All of a sudden, Elliot's like, dude, seriously, I'm going to get partnered on Twitch. Like, you should give this a shot. And that was when Shiny Random Wonder Trades got formed. And I'm like, man, it just grew and grew and grew. And now, as of this recording, um, we're almost exactly a year ago that we started yeah. Shiny Random Wonder Trades wow. on Twitch. It's so much fun. I think, I think the great thing about Twitch overall is you don't get the same kind of satisfaction out of Twitch that you get out of videos. And that's not a bad thing, but it is nice to get on and see that there's 200 people watching you and asking you questions and you're answering and you're interacting and everybody comes together a few times a week to just have a great time. And I get messages from people like, man, I had a great day because of your video or because really of your stream or, or any of that. They, they coincide, but at the same time, Twitch is more immediate and I think that's why for Pokemon, like shiny hunting, shiny trades, all that stuff really took off is because it's so immediate. They don't have to sit through a 25 minute LP. They could go watch me stream for five minutes or 50. And my goal is to get them there for the 50. Yes, definitely. And that actually leads us into the next question pretty nicely. You said, you know, people come out and you get to interact and ask questions. So that leads into this next one. Where does JPP family come from? Where did you get the motivation for that? What made you think of that term, JPP family? Are we getting sappy this early? Oh dear. Um, all right, so I had a few things happen to me. It was a great year for Twitch. It was a great year for YouTube, like you mentioned, and um, probably more so for Twitch for me, but it's coming back around on both, and I really appreciate that. And that's what I, what my whole channel was founded on was I have other channels out there and everybody knows about them at this point so I'm not even going to mention really but on this channel in particular I wanted to create a community of friends around the game because I think Pokemon's fun at its at its base why do I play Pokemon because it's fun and that was the whole philosophy of my channel just play Pokemon just play it just have a good time just enjoy it. Don't take it too seriously. If you do, that's fine, but don't ruin anybody else's good time. We're all here to come together and have fun. That's why Twitch helped because that's my philosophy. So when I say JPP family, I'm referring to the people that are that are down for the cause and the cause is just to have fun. If you're there and you're in the stream or you're there and you're watching YouTube videos and leaving comments and stuff, then you're a part of the JPP family. I use the word family because I wanted it to feel inclusive you know everybody is there in this together yes. and it was a crazy year part of why i said that was i got messages from people and and i won't mention names but i got messages from people that were like you know your videos really helped me i had a bad day at school and i come home and your videos are sometimes the best part of my day or i've been going through trouble with family or just any of that sort of stuff people have real lives and personal issues and stuff and I want them to have a place where they can come 
and feel appreciated and respected and welcomed. And that's what it is to me. And everybody really understands that and has gotten on board with that. And whatever we say it in the chat or on videos or whatever, everybody knows what we're talking about. There's not people in my chat or on my videos insulting each other or being rude to each other. I keep a clean chat. I keep a clean channel. Um, not dirty words wise, but as far <laughs> as just there's a line, right? I can call you an asshole and you love me forever anyway because you know I'm not serious about it. We have respect and that's the important thing. It's all everybody enjoying the game together and respecting each other. Totally. I agree with that wholeheartedly. That's what it's all about, bringing people together. And, you know, it's more than just a video and a stream. It's a community that we're out here and, you know, a family, you know, we uh, we are out here and, you know, we appreciate all you guys. And I mean, hey, JPP family, you just got to love it. Great stuff. Yep. Now, our final question here is for everyone out there that may have, they may have been making videos for a week, a month, a year, however long they've been making videos or streams or whatever content they're making, what advice do you have for aspiring Poketubers or really anyone that's looking to get into Let's Playing these types of videos? It's a, it's a question that we get asked a lot if we've been around yes, for a long time. I figured it would and, be good. Uh, Give it the final answer here. I think... I think there's not just one way to answer that. If I had to boil it down to a few things, it would be uh, at the start, make sure that you're playing a game that you enjoy. And and that sounds really cliche and really stupid, but if I had started the Just Play Pokemon channel and I hadn't been enjoying what I was playing, the channel would have sucked and it would have failed and nobody would have watched it. Even if I would have had the latest, greatest games, people can tell when you're enjoying what you're playing. And that's a very underrated thing. I think some people try to force themselves to play the hottest, latest, greatest game. And it's not about that. You have to play something that you enjoy and your audience enjoys. And at the start, you don't have an audience. So you should build an audience around certain games, but also around you. That's the whole point of the JPP family thing. And also, the other thing I would say is quality. You only get one chance to make a first impression. And quick side story that relates to this when you were talking about me starting just like pokemon i haven't told a lot of people this like publicly but when i first started planning just play pokemon i said okay i'm gonna do a few videos and get my feet wet before x and y come out but i want to get a 3ds capture card and i want to have really good equipment so that when the game launches and everybody's got their eyes on this new game I make a really good impression because I have quality content. And I'm not lying to you. I spent every last penny I had getting my 3DS modified into a capture carded 3DS. I sent it in to Loopy. He sent it back with two days to spare. And I got everything Ooh. set up and the <laughs> channel killed it. But I ate ramen for two weeks so that I could afford that capture card and be able to put the best quality out there. It's all about how bad you want it. And it also depends. The last thing I would say what are your goals for the channel? You've got to think about this stuff and plan it. You can't just throw a channel out there and hope that it succeeds and get mad when it doesn't. You have to have a plan behind everything. Yeah, we have fun. Yeah, we have a good time. But when you and I are planning a series, we plan for two or three weeks before we even take the series off. And we have goals and we have things in mind. So what are your goals? Is your goal to grow and be you know, the next big superstar of Pokemon or of whatever game you're playing? Or is your goal just to have fun and whatever happens, happens? That will determine what you want to do with your channel from there on out. Really good stuff. Yeah, totally awesome. And uh, I agree with all that. Definitely important. And um, thank you. Thank you for that. Those were all awesome answers. And I hope you guys uh, got something out of that. Because, I mean, hey, JPP is a, <laughs> is a veteran in this Pokemon community and just, just uh, on YouTube in general. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys enjoyed this Jubilife TV. We will have more of this every Saturday. Look out for this. If you guys have any suggestions for just uh, new segments that we could put on the show, if you have any guests that you'd like on the show, go ahead and tweet them. Tell them, hey, we want you on Jubilife TV. You can leave it in the comment section. Any questions that you want us to ask, definitely let us know in the comment section below. And, I mean, yeah, any last words you want to throw out there, ma'am? I, I have a suggestion for a segment. I think you should do Bulbasaur of the Week on the channel. Just, just going to throw that out there. Maybe, maybe. No? You know what? Let's throw no. it in right now, guys. Bulbasaur of the week. Here we go. <laughs> and it is Piplup. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. No, no. We no. did our best. 
we did our best. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate Fuck. you having me on, man. All right. Thanks, man. Make sure you guys subscribe to JPP and myself if you have not already. We both post lots of videos related to Pokemon, similar to these, you know, Let's Plays and stuff. If you like Pokemon and you like this, then you'll like our videos. And, uh, yeah, all the links are down below if you want to see the rest of these Jubilife TV videos as they come out. The playlist will be down below, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.